By this means, government may secretly and unobserved confiscate the wealth of the people, and not one man in a million will detect the theft. I believe that presented correctly, anyone can understand this system, regardless of how complex it is. So let's do a recap and break it down even more. The way the system works is that, step one, the government creates glorified IOUs. These bonds increase our national debt and put the public on the hook to pay it back. Step two, IOUs are swapped to create currency. The treasury sells the bonds to the banks. The banks then turn around and sell our national debt at a profit to the Federal Reserve, which they probably own. The Federal Reserve then opens its checkbook that doesn't have a penny in it and buys those IOUs with IOUs that it writes, checks, on a checking account that has a zero balance. Then they give those checks to the banks and currency just springs into existence. And then the whole process repeats. This results in a buildup of bonds at the Federal Reserve and currency at the Treasury, which is really just a supply of numbers. The Treasury then deposits the numbers in the various branches of the government and we get to step three. The government spends the numbers on promises, public works, social programs, and war. Then the government employees, contractors, and soldiers deposit their pay into the banks. And we get to step four, where the banks multiply the numbers by magically inventing more IOUs through fractional reserve lending, where they steal a portion of everyone's deposit and lend it out. That currency gets redeposited and then a portion is stolen again and the process repeats over and over, magnifying the currency supply exponentially. Then we work for some of those numbers, which brings us to step five, where our numbers are taxed. We pay tax to the IRS, who then turns our numbers over to the Treasury, so the Treasury can pay the principal plus the interest on bonds that were purchased by the Federal Reserve with a check from nothing. Then we get to step six, the debt ceiling delusion. The system is designed to require ever-increasing levels of debt and will eventually collapse under its own weight because politicians always kick the can down the road. They don't want it to collapse on their watch. And finally, step seven, the secret owners take their cut. The world's largest banks own the Federal Reserve. Those banks make a profit selling our national debt to the Fed. They make a profit when the Fed pays them interest on the reserves held at the Fed and the Fed pays them a 6% dividend on their ownership of the Fed. This system is fundamentally evil. It funnels wealth from the working population to the government and the banking sector. It is the cause of the artificial booms and busts of modern economies, and it causes great disparity of wealth between the rich and the working class. And it is only possible because we no longer use real money, we use currency. But worst of all, it is a form of enslavement. Bond is the root word of bondage. Whenever a government issues a bond, it is a promise to make us pay tax in the future. Nobody asked you if you wanted to pay tax today for the prosperity we all enjoyed in the last century. Nobody is asking our children if they want to work hard in the future to pay for the prosperity we're enjoying now. George Washington once wrote to James Madison, no generation has the right to contract debts greater than can be paid off during the course of its own existence. By stealing prosperity from tomorrow so we can spend it today, we enslave ourselves and future generations. Now this all sounds pretty bad, but there is great hope, for you are the greatest threat to this false monetary system. This system relies on the public being ignorant of its workings. Please share this knowledge with everyone you know, because an informed public that fully understands the system can build a better future for generations to come. And now I leave you with this quote, widely attributed to a former director of the Bank of England. The modern banking system manufactures money out of nothing. The process is perhaps the most astounding piece of sleight of hand that was ever invented. Banking was conceived in inequity and born in sin. Bankers own the earth. Take it away from them, but leave them the power to create money and control credit, and with the flick of a pen, they will create enough money to buy it back again. But if you want to continue as the slaves of bankers and pay the cost of your own slavery, let them continue to create money and to control credit.
This is the Federal Reserve in Washington, D.C. It's located on Constitution Street, and that is just as much of a joke as the New York Fed being located on Liberty Street. Both of them are unconstitutional, both of them limit our liberty, and they transfer wealth away from us every second of every day to the Federal Reserve, to the government, and to the banking sector. You are now among the one in a million who can detect the theft of your prosperity. So the big question is, what can you do about it? One, watch this video until you can describe and teach it to others. Those who understand this system can make preparations for its unavoidable collapse and protect themselves. History shows that those who don't will probably be wiped out. Two, share this video with everyone especially those you care about. All it takes is a mouse click or two to get this message in front of millions. Post this video on Facebook, tweet it, email it to loved ones. Please share it wherever you can. Three, join the conversation. The current world monetary system is based on a 300-year-old design meant to enrich a few at the expense of the many. There must be a better way. At hiddensecretsofmoney.com, We've created an open source platform for the design and development of a new world monetary system. We're calling on every economist, every student, every college, every bright mind, and anyone who cares to join the discussion. In educating ourselves and each other, we can prevent the further loss of our freedoms and maybe, just maybe, win some of them back. I think uh, your episode four is very beneficial, very helpful. It's going to introduce these ideas uh, to a lot of people. And like I've just been talking about, we have to change people's mind. And the more they understand it, the better. And I think we're at this point now where more people in the last several years, four or five years, have thought about the Fed than they ever have in the, last, in the previous 95 years. So I think uh, an explanation and diagrams to show it is very helpful because, quite frankly, they're not going to get it in their grade school. They're not going to get it in their high schools. They're not going to get it in college unless they're in a very rare circumstance to understand how, uh, how this works. You know, for years before I got involved in um, really studying gold and some of the things I write and talk about today, I was a monetary economist for decades. You know, in your uh, mm -hmm. video, you talk about the primary dealers. I was uh, chief counsel and chief credit officer, one of the largest primary dealers for 10 years. So I had an inside seat on the treasury market and have the privilege of working with several uh, former vice chairmen of the Board of Governors, uh, Manley Johnson and uh, David Mullins, going back to the 80s and 90s. So I'm very immersed in what you were talking about. I thought it was ex extremely accurate, extremely clear. I didn't think you were stretching on any points. It was, it was really like something out of a PhD course, except that it was very easy to understand. I think it's accessible. I think, it, I think we're seeing a little bit of a revolution in communications in the following sense. You know, as you point out, the Fed was created in 1913. Well, in 1913, there was no web, there was no YouTube, no Twitter. Uh, there was really no one to kind of stand up and uh, uh, oppose the Fed or call them out, if you will, or really get into a discussion that everyday Americans could follow. That's not true now with, uh, with social media and, and everything else. Uh, you can reach out to millions and tens of millions of people and tell them what's going on. I think you've done that. You've done it successfully. I, I applaud it. I think this is a great video. I look forward to seeing it again. I know millions of people will enjoy it. Well, as we know, the Federal Reserve believes it can uh, create money out of thin air, not realize money is supposed to represent real products and services. And uh, what uh, people don't realize is when the Fed does that, in effect, as Keynes pointed out, it's a form of taxation. It's a form of confiscation. And uh, because people don't see it, uh, the, the politicos get away with it, but it also undermines uh, social trust. It uh, just is uh, corrosive throughout society. 
we're going to have a lot of turmoil in the coming years, but it's going to be the kind of turmoil that leads to positive things. So uh, don't despair. Uh, get out there and fight because uh, the tide is going to turn. This is going to be the status last stand. Thank you. <laughs> this episode of Mike Maloney's Hidden Secrets of Money was brought to you by GoldSilver.com and the new Silver Pegasus Round. To learn how to protect your family and turn the coming economic storms into opportunity, visit GoldSilver.com.